we established on one side that we got Lepage, who is insane. And not in the we throw that around vernacular sense. I think he's literally utterly out of his mind. He's buying the iodine supplements. Now, go to the other extreme of the Republican Party. And remember, this is not so much about policy because Chris Christie, as we know, is incredibly right wing. Anti-marriage equality, anti-woman's health and their reproductive choices. Um, His main policy agenda is that of the plutocracy, distributing income upward, giving uh, breaks to the financial industry, um, and pretty much any powerful interest in his state. Um, So it's just right-wing machine politics, very analogous to George W. Bush, but in different packaging. And uh, look, until that day that he is indicted, and I'll be blunt, I'm not, look, he's not going to become president. I'm not as confident as Sam is in the inevitability of his getting, uh, going to jail. jail. I'll just be upfront about that. I'm not sure that happens. Yeah. Uh, but I, but I I really doubt that. I'll jump on that boat with you. Jump on the boat with me. I'm not sure that happens. I really doubt he'll be president. And I always doubted he'll be president because I think there's a little bit of a Rudy Giuliani thing going on. I don't know if that level of obnoxiousness really sells in an Iowa primary. But that being said, even with all of these multiple investigations and even with the sheen coming off of this nonsense, he is still something of a media darling. But he was on CNBC the other day. And interestingly enough, when they were not talking about, you know, uh, worshiping him for being an asshole to teachers or, uh, you know, making sure that uh, that people get uh, an additional tax breaks for weekends in the Hamptons and there's no financial uh, regulation and poor kids lose their after school program. So there can be extra uh, tax uh, cuts on couch change in the most wealthy districts and counties in New Jersey. They actually wanted to ask him about social issues, because, as you know, Chris Christie is still, in fact, as he would say, pro-life. We would say anti-woman's health. Uh, And that brought up the Hobby Lobby decision. And this distills the essence of Chris Christie, the way he responds to these questions and what he does. It distills the essence of Chris Christie, and it shows just how utterly pathetic uh, the whole fraudulent narrative uh, of him, of, 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 of his media stardom has been. Let's play that sound yourself to get bogged down, then you're going to get bogged down. The fact is that I'm, I'm the first pro-life governor in the history but of the state of New Jersey. But you're pro-life, but you'd stay out of, of the, and states can... But I'm pro-life. So well, you're saying the you social issues bog you down. I'm pro-life, didn't bog me down. Well, I got you, you, you want to take away the right to choose from women? Because I, I took other issues, like the ones you talked about, right. and that's where I spent most of my well, time Do you think a Republican about, candidate hide. should run on taking away the right to the choose Republican from women? candidate should tell people what they feel on issues that people ask you about. If you get asked a question, answer it. That's all. You're and then let what people would you do, do in terms of what we've been talking about this morning, just the ruling that came down from the Supreme Court yesterday? Uh, was the Supreme Court right in its decision? Who knows? Is the Supreme Court right? I, I mean, you know, the fact is that when you're, when you're an executive, your Supreme Court makes a ruling and you've got to live with it unless you can get the legislative body to change the law or change the Constitution. The point is, is like, why should I give an opinion on whether they're right or wrong? In the end of the day, they did what they did. That's now the law of the land, unless people in the elected branches try to change it. This is the way you get bogged down in those things. You know what? I don't think that's the most central issue that we need this morning when you look at the the challenges that face our country. All right. All right. So I love that. Right off the bat. Yeah, you know what you do? You answer questions. Oh, what's that a question for me? Hey, look, look, honey. I don't know. Okay. (laughs) How's that? That's a blunt answer. All right. Look, all that clip shows you is that if you're into that sort of thing, Chris Christie is a great bullshit artist. He's great at never answering a direct question. Hobby Lobby is one of the most significant social decisions ever handed down by the Supreme Court in modern history. And he doesn't have an opinion on it. Right after saying he's pro-life, while also implying that he's pretty much not going to do a damn thing about it. This guy built a whole brand as a blunt truth talker, well, all he did was hand out favors to the wealthy in the corporate sector in New Jersey. And yeah, he was friggin' bipartisan. He was bipartisan because he cut deals with all of the corrupt New Jersey county bosses in the Democratic Party, 
made sure their money and patronage networks kept flowing, and then built a brand as a fearless truth teller by harassing and demeaning teachers. I mean, what more do you need to know about how utterly backwards we have gotten as a polity and as a society and our politics that that's how you could build a brand as a truth, as a as a brave truth teller? Could you imagine if we? I mean, seriously. They use all these schoolyard metaphors. I'll use one, too. You imagine going into a fifth grade and being like, yeah, that's Billy. What he does is he takes um, uh, Chris, who is the most vulnerable and unpopular kid in the class, and what he does is he gives him a purple nurple uh, during recess, <laughs> and he gives him a wedgie, and he tells him he's a loser, and he smells, and nobody likes him. And, and you know— all of the girls laugh at Chris, and everybody likes um, um, when Billy does that. And that's just like, that's a gutsy kid. You know, not many kids are willing to relentlessly beat up on, bully, and harass the most vulnerable members of the class. Most of the kids just laugh and look the other way. But it really takes some balls to personally harass and belittle them every moment oh and then and then and then uh when when billy gets in trouble he gets scared and he lies and he never directly answers a question about anything but he's sort of charming about it if you're into relentless bullshitting those are the choices that we have in the republican party and i think i mean uh, that is all Chris Christie has ever said when he has been asked a substantive question. Hey, look, I talk directly, and I got nothing direct to say about it. You want me to be direct? Why don't you put some special ed teacher in front of me, and I'll call her a bitch. How about that? It's a disgusting culture of bullying, and that is the real problem with him. See, that's, to me, Chris Christie, look. He's an above-average, talented Republican politician. I get how, as a performer, why some people like him. He, of course, he's more likable than, than you know, Marco Rubio or Ted Cruz. Okay, that's not saying anything, but he is. But he built his whole brand on doing George W. Bush politics at the state level. That's what he is. He's a George W. Bush Republican. It's all corporate yeah, patronage. George, George Bush was a pretty charismatic guy too. Yeah, he had some. And look charisma. how yeah, look how great he turned look out. Look how great he turned out. But it was the same thing. The media lapped it up and they lapped it up, at least with George Bush. When he first ran, he was pretending to be compassionate. You know who else they, is pretty charismatic, Michael? Who? Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> you got to bring Hitler into my clip, huh? But look, the reality is, is that Chris Christie has always done just that. Ask me something real. I got nothing. Give me somebody vulnerable. I'll whack him around for you. And that built the best modern political profile you could ask for. So when people say, like, enough with the Chris Christie stuff and the horse race, it isn't just that. It goes much deeper because every time some of these guys, when these guys are put on a pedestal and they're given a platform, it, it is an expression of the aspirations and cultural wishes of the dominant sort of media narrative. So even the way Obama was, it wasn't, you know, what was the story with Obama? I would argue when Obama first ran, he did, in some respects, try, he did appeal to progressives. He did make those signals. But obviously, he made a much larger signal of, look, this is the healing moment. I'm the kumbaya embodied. We can put everything behind us. That's it. And what do people want? Well, you know, I kind of humiliated myself writing peons to George W. Bush in a flight suit. And now I get to vote for this kind of classy, smart guy, and he's the opposite of Bush. But he's also not going to hold me accountable. Institutionally, he's not going to hold anybody accountable. So certainly I, as a media person, will not be held accountable. Great. Beautiful. And now, it's a blunt, tough talk and no BS, let's hold people to account sort of a guy. And for some reason, it's always vulnerable people who don't have a media platform that needs to be held to account. There's nothing hard about holding people who have no power to account. It's the easiest goddamn thing in the world. And anytime Chris Christie has been asked something that would require some real courage and conviction, he's always ducked it except for in the one case of backing a Muslim judge. Bravo to him for his whole career for that. It was a great moment. But that's it. Everything else has been bullying and bullshitting. It's all you get. And the fact that bullying and bullshitting will get you so far is another great signal about just how depraved we've become in our media and our politics.